Counterterrorism Today. Up to date analysis with Dan Dyker. Combating cyber terrorism, the view from Israel. I'm Dan Dyker. This is Counterterrorism Today. Good to have you with us. We have one heck of a show today and one very critical um, um, problem to uh, discuss. We're talking about cyber terrorism and cyber warfare, two emerging threats that really fall alongside conventional and non-conventional terrorism, maybe even more dangerous. Possibility of shutting down critical infrastructures, water, gas, oil, uh, youth, you, you name it. Uh, you can shut down states, cities, countries at the, flip of, uh, at the flip of a switch. The question is, how do we define the problem and how do we confront uh, the threats facing us? Well, we have three of the leading experts in Israel on the issue of cyber and the broadest sense of the word. Uh, welcome, uh, gentlemen, Colonel Reserve, um, Rami Efrati, who is a senior member of the cyber community, Colonel Reserve, uh, IDF. He's the former head of the civilian division of the Israel National Cyber Bureau in the Prime Minister's office, and today he's the founder and CEO of Fermitas, uh, which is a, a company focusing on providing a holistic technological approach for the security of mission critical infrastructure uh, sector and the Internet of Things. It should be mentioned that uh, Colonel Efrati served in the IDF for nearly 30 years, commanded uh, a number of um, uh, important operational and technological positions in um, Amman, which is his Israeli military intelligence. And he actually received, and this is noteworthy, the Creative Thinking Award from the Director of Military Intelligence. Anybody knowing anything about the Israeli Army, if you receive this award, you're really an out-of-the-box thinker. So we're, uh, we're, we're pleased to have you, Colonel Efrati. You. And um, also in the studio today, two very important uh, experts in the issue of cyber terrorism, cyber warfare, uh, and other things related uh, to cyber with regard to threat, threats. Oren Eli Melech, cybersecurity expert, information security manager in the Ministry of Transportation and Road Safety in Israel. And he'll tell us, among other things as well, but this is critical. This is a critical infrastructure issue that we have to talk about with regard to the possibility of cyber terrorists shutting down those critical uh, infrastructures uh, in Israel and other countries uh, in the West and around the world. And uh, finally, of course, uh, Dr. Harel Menashli, welcome to the program, uh, Dr. Menashli a research fellow at the ICT, the International Center for Counterterrorism, uh, here at the IDC Herzliya, and uh, as well, he's um, a cyber information security and technological uh, intelligence expert uh, uh, in Israel, and he well known uh, for his position at the Holon Institute of Technology as a lecturer on cyber and cyber threats and at Bar Ilan University in the information science uh, department. So, gentlemen, welcome uh, to Counterterrorism Today. Let's get right, let's get right into it. Colonel Ifranti, do we, are we facing uh, a phenomenon called cyber terrorism? Can we use that term to, um, uh, to define the threat th that we do face uh, globally in, uh, in digital terror? I believe the first of all, uh, we have to identify what is terror and then we'll be able to come out about cyber terrorism and uh, terror is identified as uh, a violent or destructive act committed by groups in, the, in order to um, intimidate a uh, population or government, uh, um, government activities. And I believe that uh, whenever we are speaking about cyber, we immediately are speaking also about cyber terror. Why? Because cyber terror is a way also to intimidate the population or the government or any political uh, uh, group in order to do things that they were not aimed to do before. So I believe that we are already in the cyber uh, terrorism uh, era. And uh, I think that we have so many examples that I'm sure that we are going to speak about it uh, today, about what really happened and what is going to happen as well. Dr. Manashri, what's the major danger of cyber terrorism? Many people talk in terms of, of hackers, of hack, hacker activism, uh, not taking what Colonel Efrati said so seriously because we don't see the immediate loss, destruction of human life as we do when we watch a suicide bomber blow himself up or, her, or herself up or shooting, um, you know, uh, uh, all kinds of other um, uh, what they call acts of political violence and terror that you can actually see the blood, excuse the expression, uh, on the screen. This is a, a major problem in, uh, with uh, cyber uh, terror because we don't see uh, uh, as much attacks from cyber groups 
as we see in the uh, uh, terror, uh, the, the, the conventional terror. And the terror uh, attacks or terror uh, uh, acts that we see, most of it is about propaganda or, or recreatism or things like that. Yet, we don't see a, a, a act against infrastructures and it surprised me because we are waiting uh, something like 20 years for that and we know they, that they know some groups, some terror groups know how to deal with it and yet we didn't see uh, actions against uh, infrastructures, and that's what we are waiting for. So wait, uh, Ornel Lamelech, why you, you are the director of uh, of cyber for the Ministry of Transport? Why haven't we seen a major attack, digital attack, cyber attack against major Israeli infrastructure? Or perhaps we haven't, we just don't know about it because it was prevented. Um, also, I'd like to mention that I'm a fellow researcher here in the, oh, the ICT. ICT. Yeah, as well. Um, I do think that uh, we are only in the beginning of an era, as our, my colleague said. Uh, there are m really minimal attacks. Most of them are not published, okay? Uh, mostly focus on data leakage, okay? Stealing data that they can use for their own good. Uh, but critical infrastructure being uh, damaged, hurt, in order to uh, initiate a large-scale attack and causing havoc was yet to be seen. We know that is, that is something that could happen, okay? It happened in other areas around the world, but in Israel it, it has not yet, okay? Or it has happened, but really minimal scale, because most of it was prevented by uh, either uh, forces here in Israel uh, that are acting upon this, if it's military or government. And I think that complementing uh, what my colleague uh, Efradi said, that Cyber terror is now the point because cyber terror is actually uh, harvesting and using uh, cyber to leverage terrorism. Okay, they want to use it as a tool in order to uh, amplify the terror attack. Okay, so there has been, but it's not widely reporting. It's not been as a scale that we are afraid to see. So, Colonel Afati, when we talk about using cyber as a platform to amplify the magnitude of conventional terror, when you spoke just a minute ago, I think we were talking about cyber terror in a, as well in a different light. In other words, the possibility of destroying human life by, sh by, by, destroying, all, by destroying infrastructures and systems in, uh, in, a, uh, in any given state as a complement to a complement with, with an E, not an I, um, to conventional and biological and chemical terrorism. In other words, the question, is, uh, the question is, can we actually see, as you've given us the definition of terrorism, cyber terrorism as a, as a form of violence that, uh, that can cost uh, millions of lives? I believe that the answer is yes. And uh, things have been changed. I, uh, we're speaking about uh, political extortion. The Sony case, what are we talking about? <coughs> it's like cyber terror. We are speaking about um, affecting the um, election. It is a kind of a way to uh, affect the government. So we are going to see, uh, when we are speaking about cyber terror, I'm not speaking only about making a big damage of uh, electric, war, uh, electric uh, uh, plantation. I'm not speaking only about uh, hospitals. I'm thinking about the regular day. And things were changed. It was changed because when we are looking at uh, North Korea's uh, launching a ballistic missile, look about the cyber. You don't uh, need to launch a missile. You can do it all over, only by the Internet. And the effect is going to be the same as a kinetic effect. The question, as Oren said, did it really happen? Maybe we don't know. Maybe it is still waiting. Maybe somebody just uh, sent all the uh, relevant viruses that will wait till somebody will give the order. Uh, speaking about WannaCry that we just uh, faced all over the world during the last uh, one month, how did it happen? How was it so well synchronized? How was it uh, done and what was the effect? So I believe that uh, we are in a time of uh, cyber terror. We just have to identify again 
What do we mean when we speak cyber terror? Dr. Manashri, cyber terrorism with sub-state groups like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hezbollah, Hamas, how, um, I mean, this is an open question for all of you because it's a big question. When we look at cyber terrorists, people think perhaps immediately of state terror actors like Iran. Uh, and there are some that say that Iran has already tried to attack Israel through other sub-state groups. You can, for, for example, see what happened in uh, Tsukaitan. In the You're talking operation. about the military campaign against yeah. Hamas it's, in 2014. Yes, yes. And, protective uh, edge. As uh, published, uh, protective edge, right? As we know or, already published, the Iranian regime tried to shut down the internet in Israel. Yeah, they have a, a full operation that uh, meant to to shut down the the internet in Israel. So the the borders be between states and terror groups like Hezbollah are very very uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, <laughs> transparent. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not visible. Mm -hmm. so sometimes a, a terror a group like Hezbollah, that, uh, there is an argument uh, if Hezbollah is a terror group or, or military, but Hezbollah have uh, abilities of state, and Hezbollah uh, do and know how to do a lot of things. And as Oren mentioned before, there is question if we know about the uh, attacks or sometimes... It's, it doesn't uh, publish. So there, there is a, a, a problem and there is a question and argument between the cyber defense and the intelligence people. The intelligence want to, uh, uh, to play with the attacker and to make, to fool him, and they want sometimes that the attack tools stay in your system when you find it. And of course, the cyber cyber defense people want to remove it Im immediately from the infrastructure. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't publish, and we don't know. But we can know that even when a, a United States a, a soldiers get inside Afghanistan, they found two computers with evidence that Bin Laden a, a, a people try to understand what is SCADA and how to fall down Hoover Dam. So if we know that, and we know that ISIS have infrastructures uh, of, uh, in uh, Syria and Iraq for uh, ga uh, gasoline and, uh, and, uh, and oil, and they know what is infrastructure and how to deal with it, the question, the big question is how we can't see them try to uh, uh, f uh, attack such infrastructures, and they know what happened in December 15 in uh, Ukraine by uh, the Russians when they uh, shut down some uh, electric grids. So it published, and when it published, we know that there are many copycats, and when you find tool, you know that this tool will, explo will, uh, will copy by other groups and you can find your your tool uh, come to you as a boomerang sometimes. So I don't know why we didn't see so far a, a, a terror attacks against uh, uh, such things like infrastructures. But if the terror want to terrify and uh, to make us to make us afraid, that's the ultimate uh, thing. What do you think? Uh, I'd like to keep this question on the table, uh, Colonel Afrati. What's your sense of it? Non-state actors that are increasingly today, funny enough, when we talk about ICT and terrorism, they're holding territory. Hamas holds territory, operates more like an army. Hezbollah, as you said, Dr. Manashri, operates like, uh, also like a conventional military. Even ISIS, which is you know, this classical sort of uh, dispersed uh, Al-Qaeda type of network, they control actual swaths of territory in, uh, in two states. So, so they have, it seems that they have the uh, the uh, infrastructure and they have the, the state infrastructure to really cause to cause damage. What do you think, uh, Colonel Lefrati? We'll get to Oren in just a moment, I sitting patiently. I think that many things has, uh, have been changed. First of all, um, non-state organization, they don't have to be so, so sophisticated as the, uni the United States of America, the um, people of uh, 
Israel, Russia, Korea, Iran, and others. Now, first of all, you can go to the dark net and get the same, most sophisticated cyber weapon system by just paying money. Second, if you don't find it in the dark net, you can find it uh, all over the internet because there are uh, um, organizations like uh, Shadow Brokers who suddenly comes in the morning and let you know, here, this is the most uh, uh, advanced exploit weapon system by the NSA. You have it on the internet. And if you have it in the internet, you can use it. But the main uh, issue that uh, became uh, one of the uh, leading factors is what I call the um, attribution problem. When you attack Israel for, by the Hezbollah and you launch a missile to Israel, it takes you several minutes or milliseconds to identify who shot the missile, who, uh, where did it come from, and you know how to act. When it comes with uh, the cyber, usually you don't uh, have, uh, I mean, nobody's coming with a transparent saying, I'm the one who did it. Anonymous. 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 And therefore, also another issue is coming. There was an excellent article wrote by uh, Uri Tori, who's uh, uh, a guy who was here in, the, in, in ICT, who wrote an excellent work about deterrence. There is no deterrence. I mean, if there is an attribution and you don't know who is the guy, or the guy doesn't tell you, I'm the organization, ISIS, Hezbollah, Hamas, whatever, you're not going to attack him. And so they feel much more secured when it comes to, uh, to cyber. And the last, if there is an attribution and there is no deterrence, you can also have an attack as what we call attack as a service. You don't have to do it yourself. You go to the darknet, you pay some money, and somebody else is doing it for you. And I believe that changed the, the rules of the games because suddenly people are, I mean, uh, non-state organization are able to use the most sophisticated weapon against anybody they would like to, and uh, it's so easy to get it. You don't have to build a new uh, atomic bomb or you come with a biological uh, uh, weapon. You have it with you, and the effect is exactly as a kinetic one. And, and, and Oren, no logistical, no serious logistical problems, as, as uh, Colonel Efrati is, is suggesting, there is in conventional terror. Not big planning times, logistical bases, very simple to, to pull off. To pull off an attack, a cyber attack, is today's much more easier than to do a conventional attack, okay? Uh, Efrati mentioned uh, Shadow Brokers. Today was released by Shadow Brokers, a monthly subscription. $21,000, you get up-to-date tools, okay? So this is a really, really low amount of money to pay to get really advanced tools, state level. So non-state non and uh, terror organization and proxies can use really advanced tools, and other factions such as Hezbollah can use such tools that are really high level that were planned and devised by really uh, state level uh, actors and this enables them t to have uh, a, a, a really high scale attack capabilities and I would also mention that uh, in, in, the, in the matter of attribution which is really really important that sometimes you actually f you frame another guy okay that has been more than once it was published if you take for example uh, uh, Germany if you take France for example latest incidents do you know who it was? Was it Russia? Was it Germany? Was it France? You don't know who it was, okay? Even in the matter of the, of the DMC the, the, uh, and the, the Republic elections, okay, uh, there were traces originating to other uh, areas in Europe, not exactly to Russia, okay? And all this is really a problem because you cannot point your fingers who's the fault, okay? Who acted upon that? Uh, and I would say that um, if you look at it in a broad way, if you go back to the beginning of your question, disruptive, the, what Efrati mentioned, the definition of terror. If you manage to cause an effect in our day-to-day -day activities, okay, then you have an influence. You have an influence on the country, on the civilian, and that is an effect, direct effect also on the government. So you're, you have leverage on them, and disrupting transportation, day-to-day -day activities, banking. If you mention WannaCry, WannaCry had a huge effect on hospital in the UK. So all this is by 
I think most people's definition is an act of cyber terrorism. I believe that we are only starting to see uh, the springs here, and it will definitely grow. You know, Arne, what, you, what you're mentioning is, is such a critical uh, topic that we haven't touched yet. We're going to, in a couple of minutes, we're going to call Dr. Tal Pavel, who is an expert in what, what is known in the business, as you all know, social engineering. This notion of creating avatars and false identities and creating fear in the minds of the public through massive confusion. There are some, there are some that say that, the, that the, I was going to say the Soviet Union, that Russia has uh, engaged in that type of cyber behavior with regard to the United States in the recent elections. We don't know. We don't know. But, what, but there is the, the larger issue that you're raising a political warfare in the, through, through cyber as a, form of, as a form of terrorism, mass confusion. I want to go back to one thing you said, though, and, and put this on the table for the three of you gentlemen. That one of the, it seems, one of the scariest aspects of cyber is that viruses can be planted a year before and only break out at a at a given time, whereas in conventional terror, you know what you see yeah. is what you get. Yes. What what is the what is the implication of that threat? It's a huge implication because uh, an adversary can have uh, what you call a red button. It can have uh, inside your system a button, theoretically a red button that he can press on D Day that he can use to cause you problems, put you down, uh, not uh, causing you not to be able to react when you're needed, okay? And that can be from damaging the system, taking it down, data leakage, control remote, anything possible. But that is a huge implication. And uh, today, uh, this is a really big concern because everything, if you go back, it's a global world. And not everything is manufactured in one place by one company. So it's a huge digital supply chain, okay? And I'm not talking just about hardware, okay? A computer, what are we having here in the studio, for example? But that can also be, for example, software inside your systems that you are developing, okay? So it's pretty much uh, uh, a D-Day nightmare that can happen. D-Day nightmare, do you think so, Colonel Friday? Do you see it yes, as a D-Day nightmare? I believe so. I th We're just Already making a call. <laughs> Don't bother no us. Problem. We're ordering pizza. It's and okay. We're ordering pizza. It, we're speaking also about deception. I just want to add about what Orange just said. If you sometime find in the uh, code a uh, kind of uh, Chinese uh, characters or uh, Cyrillic, it doesn't mean that it came from China or North Korea or Russia. It means that maybe somebody is using you as a tool to identify as if somebody else did it for you. All the rest is, uh, is a big change. That will bring us to the question, I believe, that we are going to speak about it, about intelligence in cyber. So that, let's turn, let's talk about intelligence in cyber. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said uh, four months ago at the cyber, at the cyber Aviv or the Tech Aviv, I'm sure all three of you uh, were, were there or prominently or know about it at least, he said Israel is in the top five. I don't know where he came up with the ranking, but, but uh, Israel is in the top five of cyber powers in terms of counter-cyber warfare, counter-cyber terrorism. Dr. Menashri, how well is Israel doing, in your view, in order to, um, in terms of awareness of the range of threats and operationally to, uh, to set up uh, counter-terrorism infrastructures in cyber? First, we have to know that there is no such a thing as a 100% of defense. Uh, that, uh, we have to put it in our mind and uh, know it. Israel is uh, one of the first uh, countries that uh, made a, a, a defense to the infrastructures in the country. And uh, we deal with it many years ago. Uh, and because the, the system here in Israel, because we can uh, 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 we can have regulators that make a command or, or, or write a command and everyone have to do or have to follow this command it's not uh, not everyone not everything private yet in Israel so we can protect uh, ourselves second we have a lot of collaboration, a lot, lot of cooperation with uh, 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 other states, uh, 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 and you have to understand you can't deal alone against uh, your own uh, enemies because you have to be somewhere 
between you and your uh, enemy. If the enemy is, for example, or not, uh, enemy is not good, uh, uh, not good word, but uh, uh, your uh, Yariv, do you want to say your adversary? Yeah, your adversary, your adversary, yes. If your adversary is Russia, for example, and you need to be somewhere in the line between you and Russia, you don't have you don't have uh, places there. You do, you are here in the Middle East. You need some uh, help from other countries such as, uh, I don't know, Scandinavian or uh, England or something, or United States. Because, and the main problem that takes the whole issue under it is that there is no rule for cyber in, in the world. And there will no... Uh, I don't see uh, some... Uh, how, how can we have a rule because there are two uh, way of thinking way of thinking between Russia and China and United States and other countries. It's also culture, the issue of culture, it's, right? It's not not only culture because the democratic way say that there is no uh, governments of of the internet and the cyber world. Mm -hmm. uh, companies like Google and Microsoft take the rules and they will say the protocol says the protocols and so on. China and Russia say we have to defend uh, our regime, and before, because of that, not American uh, 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 company will uh, set the rules and the protocols. We, as a state, will set the protocols and will say who will come inside or who will uh, go outside. You mentioned, Dr. Menashe, just apropos your comment now that today... Today, China yes. passed a, uh, a, cyber, uh, a cyber regulation that has been very controversial on the international scene. Uh, they, they have, uh, uh, for a long time, uh, some rules and some laws that uh, make, uh, you know, every uh, company that manufacture in China <laughs> have to let the regime people go inside uh, to the factory, go to the line and do whatever they want. And if you see, for example, a company like Apple, if you remember the San Bernardino case, when uh, the FBI asked Apple to uh, open the, um, the, the iPhone of the terrorists, and I, uh, the Apple said no, because uh, we are... Uh, privacy uh, issues. Privacy, and so Apple and, and the FBI are uh, hypocrites both of them, because Apple know that because they have to manufacture in China, in uh, Foxcom, mm. they let the Chinese regime, the source code, and they let them get inside to the line. And maybe in the Apple you have backdoor that the Chinese regime put inside, because they have to do it. Otherwise, they can't manufacture in China. The law that uh, uh, came up today make it clearly and make it more uh, 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 rude because it said that every company that have database about Chinese people need to put this database in Chinese computers and not uh, somewhere in the cloud or other countries. So it's much, much, much more rude for the uh, 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 companies and I don't know uh, what will happen, but they, ha they need to, to manufacture in China because it's uh, cheaper. Let's, I want to move from China to, to Israel for a second. Colonel Efrati, you in 2012 were there uh, from, from the first moment in terms of the Prime Minister's decision to establish a cyber, uh, uh, cyber directorate, if you will, uh, both, uh, both um, let's call it civilian and non-civilian, uh, in the Prime Minister's office. How impressed were you, are you, with pri the Prime Minister's awareness of cyber, the importance of cyber? It seems that, that Prime Minister Netanyahu is ahead of the curve in terms of other Prime Ministers in other Western states. First of all, I totally agree with you. But let me uh, start with the beginning. The beginning was exactly 2003. Uh, Dr. Menashe just mentioned it. At 2003, the government of the State of Israel decided to uh, establish a new organization under the Israeli Shimbed, the Israeli Security Agency, called NISA, National Information Security Authority. But since 2003 till 2012, the, the, the country was uh, much more uh, uh, developed. And therefore, the, uh, 
the uh, government of the state of Israel, uh, headed by uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, decided to take it very seriously. And when you want to take something very seriously, you don't, you are not only uh, arranging a new organization, but you establish, you, uh, you, uh, you uh, uh, give the uh, organization a lot of money to do it. I think the, the, the decision uh, taken by Prime Minister Netanyahu was to uh, invest a lot of money in uh, securing or from cyber attacks the, uh, the government, the industry. Uh, the, the decision was also, and it was headed by the Israel National Cyber Bureau, to start a lot of education, research, uh, and one of the most important things that I was uh, one of the people dealing with it was how do we make sure that we can take the concept of a startup nation into a cyber nation by supporting the Israeli industry and make it a leading industry in cyber security and it was done only because it was headed by a Prime Minister Netanyahu by the Ministry of Economy together with the uh, National Cyber Bureau together with the uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, together with all other industries and the Office of the Chief Scientist at that uh, time, in order to support young people and startups in order to come out with what is going to be a uh, growing engine of the Israeli economy. And I think uh, we see the results these days. Uh, Oren Eli Melech, what lessons learned can we, as the um, uh, this radio program in cooperation with the International Institute for Counterterrorism help other governments and other uh, uh, research institutes uh, um, uh, and other uh, intelligence agencies to learn because you you are on the ground in this in, in you know it, what the, we say in Hebrew in the marechet in the middle of the system. Um, what lessons learned can you share with us uh, about uh, cyber terrorism and defeating it or guarding against it? Um, I think that. Uh, continuing what uh, my established colleague here said, especially Friday, is uh, the INCB, uh, the Israeli National Cyber Bureau, has definitely uh, is a step in the right direction. This is something that if you look at the uh, cyber terror and landscape, uh, the government, the Israeli government, realized that it's her duty to protect uh, uh, the civilians, not only the military, not only uh, the government facilities. This is something that has been uh, on the agenda. This is why it was one of the founding steps for the INCB. All right? uh, so the INCB is doing really crucial steps here, continuing what was uh, developed in the last 10 years uh, under the sheet bet. Okay? Uh, it's continuing the steps to protect critical infrastructures. Uh, what we do here in the ICT in Israel, uh, uh, helping fellow researchers, is making sure they're aware of the progress of research, of steps that are, are happening in Israel and around the globe that we can bring into notion. What we uh, investigate in order to uh, have better practices, guidelines, recommendations, uh, just by making sure that everybody is synced and aligned to things that are common. This is common problems that can be shared not only in Israel, but globally around the world, it's a global world. Cyber terror will not stop at the border of a country. It has no boundaries, okay? Uh, so this is something that uh, the recommendation that here in the ICT and also by the NCB and also from NISA are something that we can definitely uh, progress to the world. And uh, my fellow colleague uh, uh, researcher here, we... Uh, uh, try to bring out to light uh, all these researches and uh, development in Israel and around the globe, internal and external. ICT is not a regular academia. You have to understand it. I think what is being done under the leading of uh, Professor, Professor Boaz Ganor yeah. and Eitan Azani on all these things is, first of all, I'm taking a part in many groups that are looking, okay, don't take it only theoretically, make it Practical, practical, thing. Yeah. practical. And yes. we have uh, 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 several meetings of uh, excellent uh, experts, which comes out with a result or with a, um, a working with paper. A working paper that goes to the government as well. Um, ICT decided also that in their annual, uh, in our re uh, annual uh, meetings, we are speaking about cyber, not only about kinetic terror. So it became awareness, and awareness is the most important word when you speak about cyber. 
And in many countries that I'm going very often, when I'm speaking with them about the war, they say, Rami, it will not happen to us. It happened already, but they don't even understand it. In Israel, we have a yearly or an annual um, country exercise. Maybe. We didn't invent it. Anonymous invented it. Yeah. We Maybe. are lucky. Every <laughs> April 7th from 2012, we have an, uh, uh, such an exercise. We don't know the, uh, the scenario. We don't know anything, but we are preparing. And then you see the most important thing, the, the private-public partnership together with all the organization plus the people who are dealing with data security. And they have done, all the guys dealing with cybersecurity for their clients are sitting together, coming out with uh, their decisions, and they support their companies. So I believe such an exercise, let's call it an exercise, is something amazing, but the most important thing is the collaboration public-private uh, partnership and uh, worldwide coordination. You've said the key word, and we're, we're getting the, the word from our executive producer that we're going to have to continue this in another session. This has been a fascinating discussion. I think one thing that we can all agree about is that Israel is an agenda setter on the global scene for fighting cyber terrorism, private and public partnership, and on a government level. Gentlemen, it's really been an honor and pleasure to have you all. We will have to continue this. It's too important uh, to leave for a 35-minute initial analysis. But for now, this has been Counterterrorism Today. Orin Eli Melech, D Colonel uh, Rami Afrati, and Dr. Harel Menashri, thank you ever so much for sharing your experience and wisdom with us on Counterterrorism Today, cooperation with the ICT and uh, ID IDC International Radio. Counterterrorism Today, a collaboration with ICT.